want my wife calling another man boss. She got one boss right here. I don't want my woman calling somebody boss. Imagine I have to go to a a, a, a meeting, you know, or like a, a a get together, and I get to go shake my wife's boss hand. <laughs> Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. Thanks for all the great work you do. I wanted to know your thoughts regarding gender roles and the value we bring as men to our families and relationships. I understand that being a provider is something we should strive for as men and for women raising kids and taking care of the home is something they should be doing. I also understand that this polarity helps the male female dynamic. Uh, what about when your kids grow up and women don't have to raise kids or take care of the family in the same way, or men don't have to provide as much because the kids grew up and moved on. Or what if a man and a woman never have kids? How would you identify the value in those roles if they're not needed as much anymore? What does the future look like for partners who have traditional structures, but their obligations change? That's a really good question. And so I will just share my my experience, my plan, and how I see things unfolding in my life with hopes that maybe it will wake up something in you guys. So uh, my wife, when she got pregnant back in 2004 with our first child, um, we made the hard decision to keep her home. It was a hard decision because she was even earning more than me back then. She had a real job. I was still trying this non-job stuff. She had a real job and she had insurance and stuff. And we made the sacrifice by saying, you know what? I want there to be a mother at home for our children. I don't want to send my children to daycare. I don't want to send my children to daycare. I don't want strangers raising my kids with their fucked up values. I want my wife, who is my partner in values. We have the same values. We see eye to eye. We think the same way, right? She follows my lead. I want her to raise my children. And you know, when you're thinking about a wife and a mother, you gotta think about it in terms of hiring someone, right? Is this gonna is this person going to be the right hire? Right? We're gonna talk about dating later because I saw one of your questions, but I've said this before that when you're when you're vetting a woman to be your wife, you gotta think of it in terms of is she a good hire, right? And that's the it's the most important hire. Most men spend more time thinking about the type of car they want to drive than the type of woman that will make a good hire, a good wife, a good helpmate. You gotta spend a lot of time thinking about it and you have to put that kind of effort into it. People who hire people for their companies, they go through all kinds of loops. They do all kinds of vetting in order to see whether or not this person is, is, is fit. You know what they wanna know? Is this person fit for our culture, in our environment, our work environment? Is, she, is this man or woman going to fit into our culture. You're the culture bearer. You decide. And then you got to find whether or not this woman is worthy to fit in with our culture, how we do things around here, right? What, so ultimately, uh, my experience is that my wife and I decided we're going to keep you home. This is the right, right kind of culture that we're going to create with a mom takes care of the children, and I will do what I have to do to make sure you guys are well. And she trusted me. She trusted me to do that, right? That's, that's huge. If, you, if your woman can't trust you, she's gonna always have angst, and she's always gonna worry, and she's gonna think she needs to contribute. You gotta find a way. I don't care what it is. You gotta find a way to make sure that that can happen. Whether you take two jobs, three jobs, that's the rightly ordered home. That's the rightly ordered way. But I got a lot more to say. I was watching a video with uh, Coach Greg Adams the other day, and it and he talked about uh, you know the reality of stay at home moms. And he's a lot of times when he's talking about the reality of things, he's talking about the negative side. And these women who you know they stay at home moms, but when the kids go to school, they could sneak out and have affairs with the pool boy or with the mailman, the milkman. Right? We've always we've all heard that. You know, it's the milkman. You got the milkman's eyes, right? So when the kids are off at school, or when the kids grow up, all of a sudden that woman is because the husband's not there. The other thing is, for me, it has always been important and I'm happy I've established it, I work at home. And this is the type of mindset I want you to have. I work at home and my wife works for me. 
And so whether or not the children are present and in need, I'm still going to need help from my, my well, I, I say accountant because she does all my books. She does all my, she answers my emails. She sets up retreat centers for our events. She speaks with the insurance agents. Whatever project I'm developing for my business, she's my assistant. That keeps her busy and it also gives her a sense of, uh, of contribution to the, to, to the business of our life, right? She likes to say our business, right? Whenever she talks to like her friends, talks to people about, you know, what's going on. And they ask her about our business. It's, it's, the business is Elliot Hulse, <laughs> but she has a sense of uh, ownership in it because I make her responsible for as many things as I, I can. So this woman, my wife, she's great at the things I suck at. That's part of the reason why I married her. She used to help me with my homework. And all the bookkeeping stuff, all the communicating with people stuff. She doesn't have to go outside the home and work for this is what women call call freedom. They get to go work for another man, not their husband, not their family, but some man out there. They get to go work for some boss out there. They get I, I don't understand it, but I how guys handle this, but I wouldn't want my wife calling another man boss. She got one boss right here. I don't want my woman calling somebody boss. Imagine I have to go to a, a, a meeting, you know, or like a, a, a get together and I get to go shake my wife's boss hand. <laughs> that shit sound ridiculous. Here I am shaking the hand of the man that tells my wife what to do. And if I need something from my wife, she has to check with him first. She got to check with her boss because I ain't her boss. That's dumb. That's dumb. Whether or not a woman wants that, you got to vet whether or not you want to be with that type of woman. But for a man, I think that's dumb. I can't imagine my wife calling another man boss. So to kind of answer your question in a way, when the children are no longer requiring all of her attention, you know what she's doing? Answering my emails, answering my phone calls, reaching out to retreat centers, doing the books. You got to keep your woman busy. You got to keep her busy. You got to give her something to do. Right? Because like Greg Adams said, if they just lollygagging around, they're bored and you're not home. Satan sneaks in. That's how, that's how the snake got to Eve in the garden. Adam was busy doing something. Adam was over there watching the, the lions play. He was over there counting the zebra stripes. He wasn't paying attention. And then the snake, Satan, came in and he became her boss. If you're, if you're not your wife's boss, she's going to look for a boss. Meaning she's going to look outside the house for a job or she's going to look for a man that's going to tell her what to do when she has nothing else to do. Her personal trainer. This guy is telling me what to do. In, a, in many regards, women want somebody to tell them what to do. My wife, and women will they'll, they'll deny this all the time, but I just, just look at the way they act. A lot of times my wife gets to this point, she's like, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what we're doing, right? And sometimes I'm acting effeminate and I'm like, I don't really care, like whatever, whatever you wanna do, right? But she prefers when I say, this is what we're doing. She may even resist and say, well, I'm not so sure about that. And, she, and she's a little bit more calculative than me. She might resist, but she will like the fact that I said, this is what I want to do. I did it today. We were down in the gym. I was thinking about some certain things I want to do at the house. She just liked the fact that I'm making decisions about our future. That gives a woman a sense of security. This man's thinking about what he wants and what he wants for us, right? But you always got to be moving. You got to be ascending. You got to be growing as a man. You're never going to be stale as a man. And you got to bring her along and keep her busy. Make her a part of your kingdom, what you're doing. Do you ever notice in the game of chess, the most power, what's the most powerful uh, chess piece in the game of chess? The queen, right? 
queen because the king keeping her busy. That's why she's a queen. She's busy doing all this stuff, protecting the kingdom, taking care of the situations while the king does kingly stuff. The king, the king is setting the, is setting the stage. He's, he's speaking with God. The king is always praying. That's why he could set his queen and his bishops out to take care of things. You got to keep her busy. One last piece I'll put out there as well. And of course, it depends on a woman, right? It depends on a woman. That's why I began this whole conversation about you got to vet these chicks to be worthy of your employment. That's what you're doing. You're employing them. You, I heard it put I heard it put once this way and it, it was referring to like like the Victorian age and like when romance came about I don't remember who was talking about it but like during the Victorian age and like how a man would be in relation to, to a woman it was like you know courtly stuff and the author said something to the effect of it is a man's responsibility or what a real man does is he goes out into the world and discovers things, learns things, develop things so that he can bring it back and dazzle his wife. You have to be always expanding and then introducing her to new stuff. I'm forever introducing my wife to new stuff. She didn't, she didn't used to work out. She didn't lift weights. Why did she, and now she's, I mean, my wife is jacked. She got, she's all shredded up in her shoulders and shit. I just sit there sometimes when we're working out, I just stare at her because I'm like admiring my wife's body. But she wouldn't have done that if it wasn't, if she wasn't inspired by the spark. I'm the spark. She's the bonfire. I brought this to her. Boom. Check this out, babe. I introduced her to all kinds of concepts, new ways of thinking. She adopts my language. A lot of times, like, you guys get to listen to me, you know, a few hours a week. She gets to listen to me all the time. If you get an opportunity to sit down and talk with my wife, you'll, you'll gain some wisdom. Why? Not because she's not wise herself. She's a, she's a great woman. She's a perfect woman. My perfect woman. But because she's adopted the culture that I brought into the home for her. Right? She doesn't adopt everything I do. She doesn't like everything I do, but you know what husband is always doing? Husband is always introducing her to something new I just discovered. She came in uh, today and she's having problems with her ankle. Boom, you guys know I had the answer for that, right? Because I've been studying knees over toes guy. I'm, I fell in love with knees over toes guy. I've watched a bunch of his videos, I bought his course, and guess what? My wife got a problem, I can deliver. I can introduce her to something. You have to always be introducing your wife to something new, bringing new culture to her, introducing her to things that you can enjoy together, right? But it's gotta be the right kind of wife. It gotta be the right kind of woman that could do that. So when you say, you know, uh, when you don't have to, you know, the kids moved on and she doesn't have to do that anymore, um, and the roles, two things, man, two things. I'll just leave you with this. Number one, she, you're always her boss. You were her boss with the kids, right? Because you, because she stayed at home and you're the leader, you're the head of the household, right? So you're always her boss. And then even when the kids are gone, because you, because you are building stuff, because you're creating stuff, because you're always moving forward. You give her more work to do. As my kids have gotten older, my wife has gotten more and more responsibility for my, my business. She didn't have any responsibility in my business up until like maybe 2000, uh, practically when we started moving into, moved into this house, maybe three, four years ago. Three, four years ago, all of a sudden, like I started just giving her more and more and more and more work. Now it's kind of like a, you know, it's, it's like a part-time job for her. But we move into the ranch and I got a whole lot more work for her to do. I already told her about the events that we're doing. I already told her, I've been telling her about all kinds of new shit we're going to be doing. I'm going to need her help. I'm putting on events. She's going to be cooking for a hundred guys or at least putting together the catering, right? She's got to help me organize, organize those events. Part of what, and I'm just sharing my story again, again part of what I see for myself in my future, because you always have me think about the future is I'm 
building a retreat center, the Strand Camp Ranch. And it's gonna be a family business. I have chores for my kids to do, but my wife, the queen, she's gonna be very busy making connections, putting things together. And so you gotta keep her busy. And so that's number one, always be her boss. You're always her boss. And then number two, always showing her new stuff, giving her new interests, right? Women generally don't have interests. Most women, not all. In this day where women behave more like men, yes. But a lot of women don't have interests. Most of what women do, like when they go online, is entertainment. It's men that are the ones that like get obsessed about certain ideas and start like, we go into these like mini studies. You ever get into like a mini study? Like, wow, there's this area that I just found got real fascinating and you study all the videos about it and read all the books about it. That's, that's more of a masculine thing. Men do that. Women, they're not really doing that. They're entertaining themselves. When my wife gets on the internet, she's not researching shit. She's on Facebook looking at what her friends are doing or her, her sister's doing and then complaining. That's it. Me, I don't even go on Facebook because I'm too busy learning shit, discovering shit. But do you know what happens? Then I have something to give to her. So I'm not worried about her finding stuff. She's not going to find anything. She's not interested in anything unless I show her. Hey, look. And she, my wife is great because if she knows what direction we're going in, right? I make this decision. We're moving in this direction. That gives her excitement to go and start figuring shit out in that area too. A lot of, because if it benefits, benefit, more of it benefits her, she's more interested in like, oh, okay, well, I see this is where we're going. Like we're moving, right? And all of a sudden she's getting on the next door app and she's finding all these homeschool groups and she's meeting new people in the neighborhood. We didn't even move yet too. She's busy. You know why? Because I just gave her something to be busy about. We're moving. Get busy on that. Get busy on setting things up for our kids when we get there. And she's loving it. She's as happy as ever while she's doing that. So you got to be that kind of man and you got to find that kind of woman. Do what you want. I'm just telling you what works for me. This is the kind of guy I am. This is the kind of situation I'm in because of the type of woman that I choose. If you want to learn how to do something well, you look at somebody who is already doing it well and you follow it, you do what they do. You don't reinvent the wheel. It's working. It's working for me. Now, my kids are still young. I don't know what it's going to be like if they get up and move, but guess what? I'm already thinking about that. I'm already miles ahead of that. Given the state of the state of the world, I don't know. First of all, I'm not paying for my kids to go to college. So they ain't leaving that way unless they want to save their money and go to college. But I'm not, I'm not sending my daughters off to, to be lunch meat at some university where they're going to be drinking and pounding. I ain't doing it. I'm not doing that. I'm not paying for that, right? That's, that's, when, that's when the children get destroyed. Send them off to university, come back liberals with blue hair. I ain't doing it. So my, I'm already thinking about this plot of land that we're about to buy, that we, it's, what's unfolding. I would love nothing more than for my daughters to find good husbands. And I want to get along. I want to get along with my son-in-laws and we'll work on the ranch together. I'll build you a nice little house over there on that parcel. Build a couple houses if you want. You can raise your family right here. I want my family to stay close. Is it going to happen? I don't know. You know, only time will tell to be continued. But I want to keep I want to keep my family together. I, at least I want to have the opportunity to keep my family together. That way, you know, you say like the woman doesn't have anything to do. You know what women love more than anything? Being a grandma. Ask any grandma how much they how much more they love being a grandma than being a being a mom. I know my mom. I know Colleen's mom. Any grandma, ask any grandma. They love being a grandma. So I want to create a situation where my wife could keep her, she her hands will be busy with her grandkids. My mom, our, we're all gone. All my siblings, we all left the house. My mom stays busy with the grandkids. On the weekend, she can't wait to see her grandkids. My sister, she watches my sister's kids. My mom is busy. My mom's busy with the grandkids and doing what? Serving my father because he serves her. He still works. He still fixes cars. You know what my mom does? She makes sure there's a meal on the table when he gets home. She makes sure that his clothes are clean and folded when he needs it. 
Just make sure the house stay clean. That's enough to keep your hands full, right? So that's it, man. That's the way I think it. That's the way I see it. And that's my answer to that. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.